This is violence in Hong Kong in the subways and also taking place in the streets there. Uh, we are fortunate to be joined by Ian Young from the South China Morning Post, the local correspondent. Ian, thank you for coming in and giving us an update on the unrest that's taking place in Hong Kong. The last time we spoke, which was about a month ago, mm. these protests were just beginning. Uh, did you think it was going to escalate or continue as it has? Yeah, I mean, thanks, Michael. Um, I, I'm a little bit surprised it's taken such a violent turn. You know, I mean, I on the weekend we saw what looked like triad groups wading into these protesters you know with sticks and clubs and that was a, I think was quite a shocking development for a lot of people yeah tell us what these triads are yeah the triads are uh, organized crime groups you know they're analogous to sort of the mafia I suppose but they're also these really big grassroots groups that do have um, political tendencies uh, they often see themselves as acting as patriotic Chinese groups and uh, in this instance we've seen them uh, wading into people who are basically pro-democracy people and they've done that before so in this case in the subways these were protesters that were coming back from a rally and they were confronted by this triad yeah that's right the triad groups uh, who will uh, alleged triad groups were dressed in white, uh, swinging sticks and clubs, uh, basically bashing anyone who happened to be in black, which has been the colour of, uh, of the protest movements, and this was after a protest. Um, and, and, you know, the, the fear among the protesters is that there is some sort of political endorsement of this, uh, you know, really egregious violence. Now bring us up to speed on why the protests are still taking place. Yeah, the protests are still taking place because the extradition law which triggered these protests has not been withdrawn. The extradition law is this proposal that uh, criminal suspects could be sent back to mainland China to face prosecution. And so how does that affect uh, Hong Kong and its autonomy from the Chinese? Well, the great fear is that this is an intrusion on the rule of one country, two systems, where Hong Kong is allowed to have this high degree of autonomy. But um, the moment that suspects, criminal suspects, uh, uh, can get sent back across the border for trial, um, you know, people see that as a, a you know a great intrusion on on Hong Kong system. And the potential for China or Beijing to say, okay, send us X, Y, and Z well, criminals, and I'm air quoting it here. Sure, I think there are, of course, there would be a lot of uh, le uh, of legitimately targeted criminals in Hong Kong. But at the same time, the great fear is that people who uh, happen to stand up to the the Beijing government would just be targeted for political activities. That's the concern. Now, some of these protests are spreading beyond Hong Kong. Tell us what's happening or what recently happened in Australia. Yeah, that was a bit of an unusual incident at the University of Queensland, which was, um, you know, my old alma mater. There was this violence between uh, what appeared to be uh, Hong Kong students and mainland Chinese students, you know, where the Hong Kong students were having a protest in support of the Hong Kong protest movements and uh, a group of Chinese students then waded in, you know, blaring the Chinese national anthem on a boombox and, you know, they, they, and there were what looked like sort of um, modest fisticuffs as well, you know, some scuffling. Could we see anything like this here? Is that possible? I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility. I mean, I don't want to predict violence, but at the same time, there are, there are already divisions uh, within the Chinese community here in, in Vancouver. You know, there's always been a, a, a modest amount of tension between um, the mainland Chinese um, recent immigrants and students and Hong Kong, especially pro-democracy inclined Hong Kong people. Do you think um, what's happening in Hong Kong right now could affect migration or either in or out from our local community? Yeah, we, we have already seen an uptick in, uh, in return migration from Hong Kong and that's something that happened after unrest in 2014, in that from the most recent five-year period, we've seen an uptick in in that sort of um, that sort of migration. So yeah, I, I think it's quite possible. Excellent. Um, thanks so much for your insight. Thanks, Fascinating Michael. as always. Cheers. Coming up.